Ladies and good morning to all the dignitaries on and off the dais. Prostrating the divine feet of Almighty, it's my proud privilege in delivering a speech in this auspicious occasion before all these multifaceted personalities. First of all, my humble pranams to Mr. Shivakumar sir, chairman who delivered welcome address and Mr. Lakshmi Narayanan sir who delivered introductory address and Dr. D.K. Krishnaraj Manavarayan sir, chairman Bharati Vidya Bhavan and Mr. Karthikeyan sir IPS who got awarded from the President of India and all other dignitaries on and off the dais, especially my dear brothers and sisters of Tamil Nadu. Before the commencement of my speech, I would like to proclaim a quote of Swami Vivekananda, Expansion is life and contraction is death. Balame valve, balavina me maranam. By proclaiming this inspiring quote of Swami Vivekananda, I would like to give a motivational speech on effective communication skill. Effective communication is all about conveying our messages to other people clearly and unambiguously. By effectively communicating a message across, we convey our thoughts and ideas effectively. If our communication is poor, the thoughts and ideas that we actually send across do not reflect what we really think. A way of talking indicates the inner stuff in us. We often judge people from the way they speak. Some students talk whatever that comes to their mind without any restraint. And some students talk with very feeble voice and lots of hesitations. And some students are a reservoir of knowledge and information, but they do not have communication abilities. We may talk less, but we can impress others by expressing ourselves with confidence in an effective manner. The words we speak should be polite and sweet to inspire others and to touch their hearts. Soft-spoken persons are liked by everybody and make friends easily. Nowadays, there are several public speaking courses conducted to help the students talk with confidence and turn them into good orators. Now, I would like to give you six tips for effective communication. One, we have to cultivate the habit of writing down what we want to speak and rehearse it. Two, we must be very honest while communicating. Any dishonesty will show up somewhere and expose our weakness. Three, we should not boast ourselves. We must genuinely interested in the people with whom we are communicating. The people are more attracted to those who are interested in them and rarely listen to them. 
for we not we need to be calm and relaxed while talking we can use proper body language to supplement our spoken words five we need to cultivate the habit of smiling face smiling is the most powerful positive signal in communication six we should avoid using unnecessary acronyms we should use simple and effective words and maintain eye to eye contact while communicating now i would like to say a few words about dr apj abdul kalam dr apj emerged from the extraordinary circumstances of his own life born in a humble background in a boatsman's family being a scientist and people's president his life is an inspiration for not only the individuals but also the youngsters who have the courage to dream big over the vision 2020 such as dreams of great dreamers are always transcendent having observed him closely i am one among the millions who enjoyed his interactive speeches i met him when i was studying fourth standard in ramakrishna mission vidyalaya swami shivananda high secondary school i got an opportunity of articulating swami vivekananda's arise awake later he proclaimed that sabari venkat is my best friend it was really surprising i also clearly remember that how he made the children to recite a poem titled i will fly that he had written now i request everyone to repeat after me i will fly i am born with confidence i am born with potential i am born with goodness and trust i am born with ideas and dreams i am born with wings i have wings i will fly i will fly and i will fly thank you for repeating after me so th- let's work efficiently efficaciously consistently persistently and systematically in making india as a strong prosperous and peaceful india now i would like to deliver a few inspiring quotes of dr apj abdul kalam i am not a handsome guy but i can give my hands to someone who needs help beauty is in the heart not in the face all of us do not have equal talent but all of us have equal opportunities to develop our talents dream 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 dreams transform into thoughts and thoughts result in action dreams of great dreamers are always transcendent love your job but don't love your company because you may not know when your company stops loving you to succeed in your mission you must have single minded devotion to your goal man needs his difficulties because they are necessary to enjoy success life is a difficult game you can win it only by retaining your birthright to be a person failure will never overtake me if my definition 
to succeed a strong enough we should not give up we must not allow the problem to defeat us by saying this inspiring quotes of dr apj abdul kalam i would like to share swami vivekananda's address at the final session 27 september 1893 The world's parliament of religion has become an accomplished fact and the merciful father has helped those who labored to bring it into existence and crowned with success their most unselfish labor my thanks to those noble souls whose large hearts and love of truth first dreamed this wonderful dream and then realized it My thanks to the shower of liberal sentiments that has overflowed this platform. My thanks to this enlightened audience for their uniform kindness to me and for their appreciation of every thoughts that tends to smooth the friction of religion. A few jarring notes were heard from time to time in this harmony. My special thanks to them for they have by their striking contrast made the general harmony the sweeter much has been said of the common ground of religious unity i'm not going just now to venture my own theory but if anyone here hopes that the unity will come by the triumph of any one of the religion and destruction of others to him i say brother yours is an impossible hope do i wish a christian would become a hindu god forbid do i wish a hindu or a buddhist would become a christian god forbid a seed is put in the ground air earth and water are placed around it does the seed becomes the air a earth a water no it becomes a plant it assimilates the air earth and water it converts them into plant substance and grows according to its own law of growth similar is the case with religion a christian is not to become a hindu or a buddhist nor a hindu or a buddhist would become a christian but each must assimilate the spirit of others and it preserves its individuality and grows its own growth If the parliament of religion has shown anything to the world it is this it has proved to the world that holiness purity and charity are not the exclusive possessions of any church in the world and that every system has produced men and women for most exalted character in face of this evidence if anybody dreams the exclusive survival of his own religion and destruction of others i pity him from the bottom of my heart and point out to him upon the banner of every religion will soon be written in spite of resistance help and not fight assimilation and not destruction harmony and peace and not dissension now i would like to proclaim a few inspiring quotes of swami vivekananda think yourself strong strong you will be have faith in yourself you all have an infinite power in you be a hero and always say i have no friend they alone love who love for others strength is life weakness is death A country requires heroes we heroes feel my children feel feel for the poor the ignorant and downtrodden so i would like to conclude my speech by saying a tamil quote by kalam namude pirappu oru sambhavamaga irukkalam aanal namude irappu oru charithramaga irukka vendum Thank you very much Sabari
I can tell you, all the people assembled in this large hall enjoyed every word that you spoke. Thank you for coming here and doing it. And I have a question for you. This has been intriguing me. Intriguing me. I believe you met our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi. Yes, sir. What did he tell you and what did you tell him? Actually, I met him, sir. After that, uh, he first asked me uh, the, way, the day when you got na National Award, I couldn't reach that place. So sorry for that. I missed that day. And I said, no, sir. Uh, today I got a better opportunity than that. And uh, he asked me, he asked me that, what's your dream? I told him that my dream is to become an IAS officer and I should. <laughs> and I should administrate like you. I asked him that whether, uh, I asked him, sir, please guide me. And he told, yeah, I will. So, and uh, he asked him, would you like to say me any suggestions? And I, I told, no, no, sir, I want to ask you some questions. Okay, ask. Sir, what's the secret of your growth? He told that my, sec my growth secret is hard work. Uh, it was just one word answer. Then I gave him a speech of Swami Vivekananda. And I also told him some stories from Hito Upanishad. Later, uh, he told that, okay, grow well, I will guide you for administrating as an IAS officer. And he left, sir. That was the 10 minutes experience. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And I'm sure in addition to Prime Minister Modi, you have close to about 2,000 people who will help you become an IAS officer. Thanks again. One round of applause to Mr. Sabri Venger.